Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Matt Shannon and in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about AI. Now I wanted to start off by being here in real life, in the field, taking photos and video. And I think that's important to start things off by having some reality talk because this is an experience that AI can't, can't replicate. And what I'm here, experiencing here now viewing wildlife, photographing, watching them, understanding them is, is so much what photography is about and if you're worried about making money, well I think other people want to experience this too. So you still have the experience and if I'm going to sell this art, oh is he turning? Let's get some shots here. Beautiful. Look at that. Pretty cool. Just turned his head there. Sorry if I'm a little distracted is because I'm living the dream right now watching this great horned owl and taking photographs. So where was I? All right, so we, I wanna talk about the, kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to AI. And I think there is some cool things about it, some positive aspects. And, uh, and I use AI in my own workflow, depending on what client it is, and I'll get to that in, in a little bit. Well, we're gonna jump to my office. We're gonna go bring up some files on the computer and uh, see what AI is all about. So stay tuned. If you're new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I'm a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. From soaring mountains to hidden waterfalls and elusive wildlife to stunning sunsets, I'm excited to film each step of the way. Whether you're here to learn, be inspired, or simply enjoy some stunning visuals, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'm in Lightroom right now and I got some photos that I'm gonna experiment with AI and if you haven't used AI before well I'll just do a little bit of a crash course but uh, prior to filming this uh, I played around with AI for like four or five hours on a whole bunch of them just adding a whole bunch of things to it and and seeing what it can do so It'll be a really nice uh, quick walk through a whole bunch of different examples. So I'm really excited to share that. So let's dive on in. I've got my uh, screen set up right now. So we're in Lightroom and these are just images that I have kind of on my website. They're all finished. And I'm just gonna take uh, uh, maybe this shot right here of this lighthouse, right click. And I'm gonna edit it in Adobe Photoshop, the beta version. So not the regular one, this is the, the experimental uh, version that Photoshop has where they're testing out AI as well as a few other tools. And I'll show you a bit of, bit of those. Here we have, it's a vertical shot and let's say I wanna make it a horizontal image. Well, I can stretch out my image by uh, just going to the, uh, the kind of the crop tool here and I'm just going to stretch that out, say that far. Makes it all white. Now AI, you have to create a selection. So there's this selector tool and that's the rectangular, rectangle and square selector. So one thing I'm going to make sure is I'm going to overlap some of the image, the, the picture, because I don't want any seams. So I make a selection and then there's this little prompter down here generative fill. So you click on this and I could type in and ask it to to fill it in with something that I, I wanted to do, like a command. Instead, I'm just gonna allow it to do its own by clicking generative fill again. And uh, what it's gonna do is it gonna, it's gonna take all the information from the photo and continue it, but it's not gonna clone it. It's gonna recreate different mountain peaks. As you can see, take a look. The water, it's not cloned, it's recreated, and it'll do it differently every time. It did an amazing job here. This this mountain, this foreground hill, this foothill, went up, as you can see, and, they, and it decided to kind of have it come back down. Uh, it gives you three options every time. So you click on the next one, that's a different little mountain range. And here's the third one. Third one's pretty cool, but I think I like the first one the most. What's amazing is that the colors, the hues, the softness, uh, the harsh 
sharp edges of the mountains, all of that is is continuous. The sky is a little bit off, but it is pretty amazing. Now let's do it to the other side. I did it to the other side of the image and didn't do as good for the first shot, the second shot, but there's some artifacts down here I don't really like. Third shot, sure. You know what, if we didn't like any of that, we just hit the generative, or generate, I guess, um, up here. And it'll just do it again and give me three more selections and they're gonna be all different from one another again. So we went from vertical to horizontal. This is the same image that I just had. Of course, the mountains are different, foreground is different. And as you can see, I've added so many other things. So that was the original and then I added the sides there I put in birds I didn't like the birds there's the whale tail and all I did was just create um, with the last lasso here um, I just create a selection I just drew a circle and then I wrote in as you can see right here I wrote in whale tail and it gave me three different options some of them are really bad I mean this one kind of just really sticks out and the third one was the best in this case uh, so I did that. I added a moon there. Moon looks really cheesy. I asked the sky to be a little bit more purple. I removed this island and we're going to talk a bit about spot removal and how AI, in my opinion, is so much better in certain aspects and certain certain forms. Uh, and we'll, we'll get to that. But I removed that. I added volcano up here and I created this. I didn't like that. Um, instead, I said, hey, make some lightning. Pretty cool. I put a whale in the foreground. Um, I have like a castle up here. Here's another castle that I did up in the far back. Here's a ship off in the, the background. And you can, you can zoom in to the castle, even this tower over here. And the lighting, it understands that the lighting is coming from the right side. And it's mirroring all of that that you see from the mountains. So when I created the mountains, it a new okay shadows, a new texture, color, all of that, quite amazing. And that is something that you can play around with and have a lot of fun. Let's take another example now. If you're shooting with a distortion, uh, like this is a wide-angle lens, and the original shot is this the tent and the trees are, are tilted in with that wide angle to get the stars and uh, it's kind of whimsical and and uh, and fun I really enjoyed this shoot where we went out snowshooting and we went camping well I added I added um, AI selection to the right and to the left and it continued with that distortion so keep that in mind if if you have a certain pattern that's already forming AI if you just let it run wild it'll just keep moving along with that that same pattern let's look at the next one this was just forest you know during fall on the east coast now one thing that i thought was just incredible is i stretched the canvas above the forest because i cropped it in i didn't have any sky and i asked the ai to fill in the sky for me and that's what I did. It's it's like it knows how high the trees really need to be, tops them off. I didn't ask it to, to extend trees in the sky. It just filled it in with the content and the, the image, the details that I had there. But I wanna point out something. What about if you were to print this? What would it look like? Um, can you make money off of using AI and in creating art well if i were to zoom way in here and now keep in mind this is a jpeg that i've imported so it's fairly low quality um, it's not like a tiff file that i had so we're getting a little grainy but the amount of detail that i have in my image from my full frame camera just doesn't even compare to ai the pixels are so crappy with the ai rendering now there is a kind of a workaround and uh, I'll have to triple check and maybe pop up on the screen that it's true or it's false. But AI so far within Photoshop will only create up to, I think it's 1024 pixels within a selected area. 
So if you select one third or two thirds of an area and say, hey, fill it all in, um, you know, with AI, just fill it all in. It's only going to fill 1024 pixels and then stretch it to fill that entire space. So if you wanted higher detail here, you would have to do piece by piece by piece so that you get high 1024 pixels generated to get the best to get the best resolution. The downside with doing piece by piece is that um, it's hard for the AI to understand and talk to one another and, and create something that's a little bit more concise. Whereas if I say do this whole side, well, it can it can overlap one tree to the next uh, because I'm doing a whole area. Whereas when I'm doing square by square, it's it's more likely to screw things up. So if you wanted to create high resolution AI images through Photoshop, um, like adding to your images, you're going to run into that problem and printing like this is just going to be crap um, printing it. So that's one issue. So can you sell this? Um, would you want to sell it? I don't really know. Can you make money off of AI uh, in this case? Well, if it's web design, if it's for a flyer or a magazine, possibly and we'll talk a little bit more about that but let's still go through this whole you know imaginary world of ai and what you can do well i added a little duck here i added a whole cabin here so i just circled a a cabin and i just wrote in i just wrote in cabin um and then smoke i added smoke here now it doesn't do like the first time it gave me this and i'm like oh that doesn't look good Another one, it gave me smoke and all of a sudden has a chimney coming out of the smoke. So it's not perfect. This is black smoke and definitely a fire chimney right there, fire hazard. Um, so I thought that this was maybe the most realistic smoke. So there's a lot of time and the reason why I have all of this done instead of walking you through every different um, edit is because it took hours to kind of create something that looked half de decent. Put a dock here, so cool, you know, it gives you reflections and it kind of fits in fairly good. Again, it's, it's a little pixelated, actually it's not bad. Again, this is 1024 pixels that went into a smaller selection as opposed to the tops of the trees. It stretched those pixels out. So it looks better having that little dock there. I had a fish jumping and it looked ridiculous. Uh, there's this guy when it comes to humans It still does a really bad job with like arms and stuff. Let's take a look at the other humans it created There's this guy. He's, I don't know. He looks like he's standing in some bucket or whatever And what did I write? I said person fishing So I don't know if he's really fishing and it looks like he has like a Bluetooth little, little thing coming out of his ear and then there's this lady um, out with an apron on and just funny so I didn't go too in depth with this uh, I thought that this one was okay I just left him um, I put a kid here on the dock and it looks like an evil child but its reflection works within the water so there's some ripples where the head is and the arm coming down here and it, and it looks okay. I don't know what this bowl thing is. Um, and there is a couple of other creepy children out here. This one is just like summertime in a towel or something. So yeah, it's, it's not there, especially if you want high resolution images. When you're pulling back, it kind of looks quaint and it, and it works maybe, but will AI get to a point where everything is so perfect, even human faces and stuff? I think it will. Um, but really, what can you do with that? Um, and maybe you already know and you have some ideas. Feel free to write them down in the comments. We're all screwed. <laughs> this is going to take over everything. Um, but I have some theories and some thoughts and we'll talk more about that. Okay, we'll go through some of these quickly. This is the original. It's just this horizontal shot that I took of the eagle coming into this eagle's nest where there's a little baby eagle up here and all black and white. So I wanted to see what black and white would do. 
and I added just a little bit of section of the tree and then this whole valley. Then I added a ship off here and it's and it's nice kind of um, off in the distance. I added a whole city. The city took a little while. Um, I kept deleting it, but this is the first one with the city and it's just mush out there. And this one's like a couple of little buildings. So the second one was, was quite a bit nicer as far as like a city down the valley. I added a deer in the foreground, like a buck. And the moon didn't work in this one. The moon rarely works. So if you're going to really want to get a moon shot, um, good luck. This was something that I thought was pretty neat. Uh, the original is kind of this adolescent bald eagle and uh, just staring me down. And I added all these other things. I added a cigarette with, with the, the smoke. And the lighting, like just because of the beat that's there, the lighting that's hitting that cigar is just at the tip there. The rest of it's in shadow. Pretty amazing that AI sees that. But one thing that I thought was just so cool is um, where are we at? The suit. I tried a couple of different suits. This one looks just stellar. Um, I put a chain on there as well, a gold chain. It didn't look that great. Oh, I tried glasses. Freaky, right? Because it like warped and, and used the glass, I guess, to change the eyes. So glasses did not work. Um, gold chains look really cheesy. But the suit, let's go back to the suit. So the feathers, if we were to remove the suit completely, I've got, I, I added... I had AI extend kind of the body of the eagle and it did an okay job with the feathers and stuff. It looks a little mang mangy. But then when I added the suit, the feathers overlapped the suit and gave some shadows or shadows in here um, where the, uh, the feathers are overlapping the suit. The lighting too is still from the side and the suit gets darker to the, to the right of this image. Here's one where it's straight on. And then this is another one. Look at the shadows here. So crazy. And there's really nice texture. Like that looks that looks really good. Uh, and the colors, get this, the beak, the bill there of the eagle has that blue. And this AI can take matching colors and, and make it more. It's not, I didn't ask it to, to give me a blue suit. I just said suit. I could have said pink suit or something. But instead it gave me the most pleasing suit <laughs> that would go with the eagle. Now, check out the tie. Where's the one with the tie? The tie, it took colors from the, the mouth section of, the, of this beak and it added it into the tie. So quite amazing for what it is so far. Um, and I selected an area with the feathers and, and downwards and voila, it gave me the suit. Very cool. Uh, what would I do with this? Well, I think if someone had a book uh, and they wanted a cover of like, you know, um, Kingpin of the Sky or something like that. And they're like, oh, I want this, this character to be represented as an eagle that basically is a kingpin. Can you make something that would look like that for my book cover? I don't know. I'm just making things up on the fly. And uh, maybe you can create something that is uh, that is artistic. So I think it's a form of, of art, AI art. Um, yeah, moving on, we can kind of touch base on some of those things. But these are the things that are kind of rolling through my head as I'm editing and seeing what AI is doing. Now, this wing here, um, the reason why I did this one uh, is that on one of my other YouTube episodes, Actually, a couple of them. It seems like the wildlife, I get these perfect shots of the, the wildlife like flying away from me. Maybe it's a sign. And then I'm like, oh, I'll just ask AI to make it so that the, the you know, the, in this case, it was a snowy owl. It would be flying towards me. Of course, the wings are screwed up and stuff, but not bad. I'm really going to switch things around, I think. Uh, yeah, so moving on. This one I absolutely love. So... Let's go to the look of the original. This is the shot where I'm in the Rockies and the road is going off into the distance. And I thought, oh wow, this would be a cool one to, to make either a book cover for like Harry Potter in the next generation or something. And that's when I just kind of went crazy 
and I added all these different things. So let's start at the very beginning where I did put the castle in. Let's say if we don't have the castle, um, but the water in the foreground, look how, like I didn't do all the way up to the road there because I wanted to fill that in with something else. But I did the lake there and it could, gave me a mirror of the trees but you know nicely rippled in in the foreground and then there's even air currents over the lake it's just amazing it did, did such a great job and then also it knows that it, it there's snow on the ground but not too much snow just enough uh if we take a look at the four before and after so that's along the coast and there's rocks and stuff now i didn't like these uh these stones here with uh, the ice or um so I got rid of both of those. Now, where the road is kind of continuing in the background, I wanted a bridge. Now, I first said bridge, and it gave me this modern web bridge that you'd see. Um, so you have to tell it to, to, I think, what did I write here? Old stone bridge, because before it was this. It gave me these, you know, modern bridges. So there's a couple of different old stone bridges, and I really like the middle one. Bada boom did that. Um, I did have the castle, but even right there, if you didn't have the bridge, whatever, and it was just the trees, it's pretty cool. Maybe this could exist. Maybe you can fool someone and have the mountains and the foreground. Pretty amazing uh, that you, you can do that. What would be the reason for it to tell someone that? Because this is a well-known area, this, this drive and everything. So if I were to post this, and say look what I captured and and try to fool people as soon as someone would find out then that's it you're kind of screwed uh, because you'll, you'll just be known you'll, your default in in your photography career will be like oh you, you just do things with AI you completely screw things over so if this is a type of art that you're doing I think indicating that it is AI art um, is it just puts you in that category and it's fun, like um, maybe you can have a career doing this for, um, you know, for books and different publishing, uh, uh, World of Warcraft, who knows, maybe you want to create some digital art that kind of goes with a bit of fantasy. Um, so let's put the castle back in there because I like it uh, and I think it's pretty cool. I added some birds up top. The moon didn't work. Again, always trying the moon. I put a horseback rider here because it was kind of like this whole journey. The horseback rider is going to go over a stone bridge to the castle. So you can see how you can be creative and, and make up a story. And, and instead of like drawing or painting, you're just asking AI to, to do things for you. Um, and then one thing that I thought was so cool is that I wrote in here thin clouds. Like I selected just a, an oval shape on the mountains here. And you can kind of see through some of the thinner clouds and it kind of gets wider and like it's actually wrapping around this this mountain creating a bit of a 3d look and what's i think most impressive is the lighting so the lights coming from the left it would hit that cloud and this is a little bit of a hot spot and it's believable because the the mountain and the snow um might not reflect and there and there's a bit of distance between the mountain and the photographer and so there it would dilute maybe the the brightness of that reflective snow whereas the cloud thin clouds can get really bright um, with the light kind of hitting it and amplifying that and it did an incredible job even the blue there's blues in in here even though it looks very black and white um it, it added the same color palettes that the entire image is so that i think is is incredible so that's a cool scene what a, what a fun one let's go through a couple other ones this is a cave and i asked ai to extend everything and then put gold in the foreground and again with the lighting i got that lantern and these gold gems and i think this is like a sword or something like that a gold sword or whatever there's there's uh there's treasure it took a while like there's some crappy treasure ones if i were to click on there like what is that right um and then there's this that kind of shows gold and and shimmery objects but it takes all the color the reflection does an incredible job let's go to the next one 
this right here, I didn't add the polar bears in, but you could. Uh, I could just take the last suit right here, make a selection, click on here, go polar, polar bear and cubs. Maybe it knows one's an adult, one's a cub or two cubs since it's plural. And you could just add polar bears in. It might take a little while to get something that's realistic. And look, there you go. You got one that's walking and another one behind. That's the first one, second one, two cubs. Third one is one lying down and it shows the fur line and some of the dark underlying fur from stretching out. Like it's incredible. So that polar bear doesn't exist, but these ones do. My wife took this shot and this is the original. Right, so it's just in this frozen wasteland, and with AI, you could create rocks, you can create ice formations kind of in the back here. Um, this is like it's like frozen, muddy ice and rocks, I think, in the foreground, and you can make it a bit more of an environment that has other darker, uh, darker subjects, um, darker elements in it to kind of combat the all the white everywhere. And this, you, would, you wouldn't, you would like, how are you going to know that this is real or not real? Uh, the, now, the polar bears are real, and the details are there from the, the shot. Um, you can see all the hairs and everything. So, uh, But that is, uh, I think that's incredible. Uh, I think it's the landmarks that are going to be the issue, that if you are getting hired by tourism, tourism's not gonna be like, mm, you know what, we're just gonna use AI to recreate uh, the city of Victoria. Uh, AI just isn't there to recreate uh, landmarks and have all the details without really screwing maybe the whole thing up. Like uh, it, it, just, it just can't get to that point. So they're gonna hire a photographer to take pictures so that there's no false advertising because they're trying to bring people to the city of Victoria, right, through tourism. As well as uh, um, commercial photography, I'm talking about like houses or architectural photography, things that do exist, maybe you're submitting them for awards and stuff, uh, you know, indicating that, oh yeah, that entire dining room doesn't exist, AI created it. Well, what's the point? Yeah, like a, no one would want a AI dupe people into thinking that they did something amazing. And if you did and you got away with it, well, shame on you. As uh, that's horrible. So I don't think that that is going to happen anytime soon. And I'm not sure what soon really means. Uh, but at least now in the near future, I think photographers and videographers are going to need to get um actual landmarks and things that people have created and done other businesses that are proud of what they've done that are physical and they're going to need to have documentation for the portfolio their website that sort of thing where this does come in this this whole ai thing here's one example say a, a nike shoe that's supposed to be waterproof or like that some marketing technique would be like dropping a nike shoe into a, a container of water to get the picture of the the water and the bubbles and everything kind of splashing up i'm thinking of this really cool studio shot or even coffee beans like pouring down next to a delicious cup of coffee that has the steam rising up and stuff like that uh or berry mix you know you see all those commercials where like berries are getting mixed into this fruit uh, mixture and it's popping off the screen and that sort of thing those photographs you can now just type in to these ai programs and it'll just create it for you it just creates these sort of magic moments that uh, get people to buy their product so product photography i feel like this is like wow it's coming a long ways really fast will that replace and if you do photography product photography i'd love to know like what do you think about this are you using this product maybe we have to pivot a little bit to appease the the industry that is demanding this type or are is it just not there yet is there a way to just kind of fight it because um it does look low quality or it looks fake or people want real let me know what you think okay moving on 
Now, here's a shot I think I took with my iPhone. I can't remember, but the flowers all blurry in the foreground. The sky's really cool. A lot of distractions. And I thought, I wonder how far I can make kind of a junk picture kind of go. And I added different flowers in the foreground and it took inspiration from the blurry ones and it created much closer to larger ones. Really like that, that was cool. It added mountains where I told it to add mountains and it created these kind of tapered off mountains. I said, hey, a horse and buggy. Um, oh, there's a town back there, a little city on a hill that I asked it to, to do. Um, I had to delete that part. These are the mountains. So it recreated all of those. This is the guy. So it first gave me a horse and carriage and I didn't ask for it to have people in it. And sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to start it like step by step by step and be like, here's a horse, a carriage connected to a horse. Boom, a uh, person now in the carriage. So uh, what's, what's amazing is that you got this horse and carriage and I just circled an area. And what did I say right here? I just said, add people and add one person. Um, here's another one, uh, not nearly as good. And then this is the first one. Um, uh, of a guy so that it didn't add multiple people it had one person but it, it knew that it needed to sit down in the seat that was already existing so the program is incredible it's it's fast uh, it's getting faster it's getting better now we're gonna switch gears from like so the landscape and wildlife fun AI stuff to commercial photography and and these are this particular site is is a house that I took pictures all on the inside and later on I was gonna come back for like sunset twilight to take some drone photos and stuff so before I did that in the afternoon um, I popped up the drone to see kind of what angles in preparation because you only have so much time to get the perfect shots so I'm flying the drone and lining things up for the evening so really bad sunlight and and shadows and stuff but I wanted to show you kind of like a snapshot of, of maybe what AI can do in this in this circumstance. So I'm standing here, I've got the drone remote and there's a lot of distractions here. The hot tub isn't open, it's closed. The fire isn't on, the fire ring. There's not a lot of any fires during this time because of the, uh, the, the, the heat, how dry everything is. So uh, first thing I did is I removed myself. Now, AI did an incredible job. Look at that. Now, if I were gonna use spot removal, and let's just try it here, I'll add a layer. And this is the original spot removal that everyone loves and used on Photoshop. So I'm just gonna highlight my boot and the shadows. And what it'll do is it'll screw up the, the, the scene where there, the railing is now interrupted and it did a great job of removing me and it did like content aware. So I brought in some of the greenery and stuff. Not bad, but still a lot of clone stamping. And normally, yeah, that's what you would have to do is grab this clone stamp tool and you would have to like select this and, and, and clone stamp it. Now there's this new tool called remove tool that uh, Photoshop has used for their beta version, which is this version. And it kind of does the same thing that spot removal does. Oh, I'm still on the wrong setting here. You can highlight things, but it's a lot smarter. I don't think it uses like AI technology or anything like that. And it can detect patterns. And you can see that the pattern of the, the walkway and stuff, it continued it. The railing is still intact. And this is for like chain link fences or something that you're in front of and it can stitch the chain link back together. So it does an incredible job, but AI, I think beats all of them. I'm gonna make a selection here. Da, da, da. La, da, 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 da. And generate, and instead I just tell it to remove. And it'll do an incredible job. And if it doesn't, then I quit. AI is junk. We don't have to be afraid of it. Our lives are gonna be so much better. Ah, we do have to be afraid, that is crazy. Look at that, that's nuts. So that is one thing that I use AI all the time for is removing things, especially when it comes to very complex 
distractions like this fence down here let's see let's move along oh yeah i put a guy here like when it comes to humans uh i added this guy he's got a big fro um pretty cool uh where is he there's this guy but it removed the background i mean he looks demonic it looks horrible so they need to work on humans so if you're going to be doing humans i mean what is this this is definitely passed through elements of of the underworld so let's get rid of the humans there here's the fire so i added fire which is amazing uh i can i can add this little piece in there and it's fairly high resolution just because of how small it is okay what else the jacuzzi or the the little pool there it gave me all these different options but i like this one look great now the fence here we go i just removed the fence so i selected the whole fence and i removed it using ai that i think is is brilliant so pretty cool it needs a little bit of work so you can see the back leg of this chair it kind of cut off and with spot removal i'll remove all those other distractions so again removing myself seamless everything looks great i added a fire here you can add humans and stuff but it looks really bad so i wouldn't uh wildlife you could probably add a puppy or a dog in this scenario which i have done um, in past shoots uh, but the best i think is just physical things that um that don't require like uh features that um are really easy to point out like human faces and, and skin tones and that sort of thing okay look, let's look at this bathroom this is the original on this bathroom and look at what i could do this art right here, uh, maybe the client doesn't like to see this or words and stuff, it's distracting. Um, so guess what, I can just, I said art, artwork. And it gave me, uh, there's black and white, here's another one. Pretty amazing, so artwork, did that. I removed this towel off to the side and I used the AI, I didn't use the spot removal. The spot removal would have done a really great job, but AI, look at that, incredible. Next, I, what am I clicking on? Um, is it the floor mat? The floor mat. It was more of a towel and I gave myself a different floor mat and it matched the tone of the room. Those kind of yellows and beige colors, it put that into that floor mat. So you can understand patterns and that is incredible. This soap dispenser, I highlighted this whole area and then I just typed in soap. Now I would have spent a little bit more time on it because this looks a little bulky, a little big. So I'd probably want to shrink that down a little bit. But look at that, amazing. Now I always like in a bathroom to have some sort of greenery in a pot or something like that. And uh, if you don't have an interior designer, which is what they are normally there to do, is just set everything up, make it look really homey, um, that sort of thing. I added this in. Now you have to be specific. I had to say green plant in a white pot and it gave me a green plant in a white pot and behind it is still the texture of the tiles it didn't take any of that away and uh there you go there's shadow as well there that it added onto the surface so is ai a useful tool to have to create elements within your photography that are just supportive elements maybe in commercial architectural photography now i didn't add a different toilet it wasn't like a different cabinet the shower is now a, a four spray shower walk-in feature that sort of thing no these all exist here and that plant could be brought in or removed and uh and this is this is one way that you know for design companies that that have um, you know, built rooms like this, they can show clients, hey, these are some options of what you can do. And instead of having to pay uh, for a program that just stitches these things out every week or whatever, they give you five more options, you can just create your own in real time. I wanna know exactly what you guys have done. Uh, have you played around with AI? Does it freak you out? Photographers, do we need to be worried? Is this gonna replace you? Um, will it replace me? I don't think so. Uh, I'm using it and I'm at the forefront of, of the changes that are happening. And I think there's some, some cool aspects with it, but 
Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, I'm really curious. But if you like this content, please give me that thumbs up. It really helps with the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. Uh, this has been a fun little exercise, but I'm going to get back out into the field and uh, take more pictures uh, in nature because that is way better than AI. And uh, so there, AI, take that. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next episode. AI, make me a milkshake. I have a pinched nerve in my back. Can you fix my back? <laughs>